so I'll be presenting the uh, the highlights of the second um, of the three platform knowledge pieces in addition to uh, the Overseas Development Institute. I'll try to keep my presentation to, to 15 minutes, let's see if I manage. So um, to get started, let me just uh, run it through the aims and focus of the study. I guess all three platform knowledge pieces reflect uh, the platform mandate and concern over the effectiveness of aid, and I think CKP2 uh, makes this particularly evident, and therefore uh, I guess the, um, our findings and uh, messages are, are, are useful in the road to the sun. Um, the aim was therefore to uh, um, contribute to a better understanding of aid flows to agriculture, rural development and food security and in this way contribute to strengthening um, the um, transparency and accountability and, and as a result the effectiveness of aid. Sorry, I was trying to uh, get uh, the slide moving. Here it is. Um, and, uh, for this purpose, we looked at the quality of aid me measurement in agriculture, rural development, food security, and more specifically, uh, we investigated the extent to which aid data provides uh, a good indication of policy priorities and also the changing uh, policy context for ARD and for uh, aid delivery more, more generally. Um, in terms of methods and outputs, we drew on um, a mix of uh, quantitative and qualitative methods. Uh, the work comprised uh, background reviews on uh, why aid is measured, uh, on the global the aid databases available, um, an analysis of, uh, of global aid trends. And uh, in terms of case studies, we undertook four um, donor studies, as we called it, on the practices of individual donor agencies. We speak to the uh, German agencies, the UK, the US, and the World Bank. We also undertook three country uh, case studies on Malawi, Nicaragua, and Vietnam. And we complemented these with uh, test based studies on EFAT and the non DACT official donors and private foundations. So, quite, a, quite a, a, a lot of work was undertaken. Due to time limitations this afternoon, I won't cover the details of the material gathered and the, the analysis undertaken. Uh, in detail, and uh, I think there will be a chance for a separate briefing on uh, a selected group of these studies uh, later on, depending on uh, on your interest. In terms of outputs, we've uh, produced a synthesis paper, and uh, um, let me show you the uh, nice cover that the platform secretariat um, uh, created for that. Here it is. It's available on the platform website. We've also produced several working papers, and they're also available. And also a key, um, a key findings note, which you can see also there, released in August 2011. Uh, and, and finally, there's a platform policy brief, uh, which will be released soon. It's, uh, it's already um, written, uh, written uh, down. And much of what I'll be saying here this, uh, this afternoon is summarized in that um, platform policy um, brief. So uh, I hope you'll, um, you'll have the chance to read it. Um, before I start to presenting the um, findings, uh, let me just run you through um, some um, basic measurement concepts uh, that, uh, that are important for, for our analysis and that I'll refer, refer to in the uh, next few slides. Our analysis drew substantially on the eight classifications defined by the Development Assistance Committee of the OECD in its uh, creditor reporting system. This is a system whereby DAC members and some international organizations report on their respective aid flows. So the uh, Development Assistance Committee, or DAC, uh, uses purpose codes um, um, to account for the destination of aid flows in terms of sectors and themes. Here in the slide, you can see uh, three of examples of, of those codes that are relevant to our analysis. So the DAC has five-digit purpose codes, uh, just under 200 of those. Um, and these are groups into, grouped into three-digit categories, including agriculture, forestry, and fisheries. So each, each of these three would have under, under them um, several, you can see the, the number in brackets, in bracket. Agriculture has uh, 18 five-digit purpose codes uh, underneath, and these include uh, support to agriculture policy, land management, uh, water management, uh, agricultural research, a number, a number of, um, of, uh, of things. Um, so uh, 
the, uh, that has two uh, relevant definitions on agricultural aid. The narrow one is precise, includes precisely these three categories, and we refer to it as AFF, uh, which, which means agriculture, forestry, and fisheries. But then the DAC has also a broader definition, which, uh, which brings into um, the calculation three five-digit uh, five codes, rural development food, food security programs and emergency food aid, which, although not contributing directly to um, agricultural development, they, uh, they are important uh, for improving rural livelihoods and food security. And therefore, um, that has developed uh, this broader measure, which we will refer to as, um, as AFF plus in the next two slides. So let me just share with the, um, in, uh, in broad terms, the results of, um, of our um, analysis of um, global aid flow. This graph uh, shows us trends in uh, AFF and AFF plus, the two measures. The bars show you the, um, the share of AFF to uh, total official development assistance. And then the, uh, the lines, the, the dark blue shows as AFF over time. Uh, the green line shows, uh, the red line shows us the broader measure, AFF plus. And then the green line is AFF plus excluding emergency food aid. So the green line would be um, development aid uh, directed to uh, agriculture in the broader, in the broader sense. Um, let me just highlight three patterns which I think are important in this graph. The first one is that current uh, aid flows to, uh, to this policy domain are lower than, the, than where they were in the mid 80s to mid, uh, um, in the um, uh, mid 70s to, um, to, to mid 80s. And this is, they are lower both in absolute and in relative terms, both in terms of the, um, the, the total amount of flows flowing to the sector, but also in terms of share of total loader. The second, uh, the second pattern is there's been a, a, a quite sharp decline in, uh, in agricultural aid uh, uh, from the mid 80s till the, uh, the mid 90s, as you can see um, in the, um, let me see if I can point that to you, as you can see here. Um, the, uh, the, this, uh, this decline is now being reversed, and that's the third pattern, as you can see here. Um, and, and the reversal is, is more significant if you, if you account for emergency food aid, as the red uh, lines show you. Now, what, what our study argues is that um, this narrative on the, um, the fall, the neglect, and uh, revival of agricultural aid is... Uh, it's somewhat simplistic and does not help us much in understanding the structural changes that have been uh, um, going on in the, in the sector. And, and our case studies are very useful in, in illustrating those changes. So our argument is that uh, the standard statistical measures that are available and that so the that produces are insufficient to account for these structural changes. And these changes uh, um, um, reflect um, um, transformation in the role of the state in agriculture, a change in focus of public investments, a growing emphasis on the um, on addressing the, the disincentives facing um, uh, uh, farmers and um, and uh, and agricultural suppliers more generally. And I think the um, let me just um, on the top here. You, you can see some of the broad trends in agricultural policy. So I'm here referring to uh, the more recent trends, the focus on supply constraints, and how, how uh, these, these, these patterns are not clearly seen if you, if you look at uh, the broad trends in, um, in agricultural aid. Um, the uh, number three of these platform knowledge pieces on private sector development, I think will be very useful in illustrating some of these transformations in the agriculture sector, particularly the changing role of the state and the importance um, and the changing role of the private sector as well. So our argument is that these changes are not fully reflected uh, in, the, in the broad aid trends and therefore um, this needs to be um, taken into account in, uh, when we analyze and discuss um, uh, the future of ag agricultural assistance. Now, uh, let me just show in the next slide uh, uh, if has assistance to this policy domain, because I think it provides a very uh, simple and good illustration of the failure of the, uh, 
standards um, on um, on airflows to agriculture, the failure to capture some of these transformations that I've, I've uh, briefly uh, referred to. Uh, given IFAD's mandate, uh, I think we can um, quite comfortably consider uh, the uh, totality of its finance as falling within the scope of our study. Now, in the graph that you can see in the slide, the, the green line um, uh, corresponds to a uh, total IFAD funding to, to agriculture and rural development. Uh, now, uh, a considerable proportion of this um, fails to be captured by the, uh, the VAC definitions from uh, 2002 to 3 onwards, as, as the, graph, the, the graph shows you. Uh, the gap between uh, IFAC's total funding and the, uh, the, the broadest uh, back measure of agricultural aid is as large as 58% uh, in 2005 and a and bit, bit um, small, smaller but still significant in 2009 at 32%. And uh, let me just show you another graph on the side. Oops, moving too quickly there. Let me show you then another graph on the slide, still on IFAD, which, uh, um, which tell us what sort of uh, aid categories are being missed by the, um, the DAC standards. Uh, so you have there um, the most significant one, which I wanted to highlight, is the banking and financial services, which uh, in the 2003-2009 period accounted for 24% of IFAD funding and are not captured in either the AFF or the AFF plus definitions that the DAC uses. Why is that? Because uh, a lot of these uh, financial services related projects, um, uh, they have no restrictions that credit and financial services are provided to farmers only, so they can be provided to other other stakeholders in the rural sphere and therefore they cannot be coded as agriculture finance in the strict census and, and therefore not in the AFS definition. But so it's quite an important uh, amount proportion of IFAS funding that, that we are missing if we use the standard definition. So uh, taking this into account, ODI proposed to develop a broader measure of agricultural aid um, which uh, considers other relevant um, um, other relevant aid uh, spending categories, um, including uh, those that um, that IFAD uses and that we've shown in the in the pie chart. So in our recalculation, we added 24 additional uh, that purpose codes, and we took percentage of these um, of these codes. For example. We uh, took trade facilitation, which, which is not in our in area of the two DAC definitions, and we've considered 20% of that, of projects coded as trade facilitation, to be attributable to agriculture. And why 20%? Because this is the average rate of agriculture products in developing countries' trade flows. So we think that that's, that's a good enough um, explanation for, for, for that particular choice. In our synthesis report, we have a table that uh, provides you with all the information on all the categories that we've selected, the shares that we've applied, and the rationale for that. So I'll, I won't spend more time on that. Let me just show you the results of our calculation in this graph here. Um, the, uh, the red line um, is, is, is what results from our from our recalculation and we call ODI measure and there we're comparing it with the two uh, back definitions. So what does this graph show us? That um, the ODI uh, definition adds uh, quite a, sig a significant uh, amount of resources. It, add, it adds volume to the calculation and, and it is as high as 48% in 2006. But it doesn't change the pattern over time of aid to the, uh, this policy domain in, in any significant way. The, the, the trend overall, the pattern remains more or less the same as in the other, as in the other, as you can see in the other uh, lines. However, from, uh, uh, from the late 19s onward, you can already notice that there is a, a constant diversion of the red uh, line in relation to the, um, the pale uh, blue line. And the, um, the graph that I'll, I'll be showing you now uh, um, shows the difference between the ODI measure and its uh, broader measure, AFS plus, 
therefore you can see that uh, uh, the distance between the two is increasing over time. And why is that? Because several codes that we consider in our definition uh, have been displaying quite a steep upward trend since the late 90s, and that's the third, the smaller graph in that slide. You can see that categories such as informal, semi-formal financial intermediary projects, budget support, uh, sorry, business support services, trade facilitation, and SME development projects have been growing quite significantly over the last few years. And that's, that's having an impact in our, in our calculation. Now, we think that these are important, um, important trends and they reflect the new approach to supporting ARD and need to be factored in, hence our proposed um, recalculation. So, but this is on um, looking at the global, the global trends, the global uh, data available on, on A flows. But what about individual donor, donor agency practices? We looked at this um, through our individual case studies. And, um, and, and the, in short, the message is that diversity in, um, in, the, um, in practices for measuring and, and tracking A to agriculture is the rule. And this makes this diversity makes it very difficult to have global consistency in aid measurement. And why such diversity? Several reasons for that. I'm just running quickly through those. First, the, the variety of institutional arrangements for aid management. And you just have to compare the UK, the US, and, and Germany to, to realize how much diversity there is. The UK has a centralized uh, agency for, uh, for aid management, whereas the US and Germany have, um, have more decentralized models, different models, but both uh, quite decentralized. Um, on, on the other hand, uh, although um, across the donors analyzed, there's a similar approach to tracking expenditure against uh, policy areas or themes, mainly for domestic accountability uh, purposes. Despite these, there are significant uh, differences in the way they, they uh, formulate these things. And, and I guess the, uh, the, the L'Aquila Food Security tra Initiative, the tracking exercise uh, for the commitments made um, under that initiative are a good reflection of, of the diversity in, in the thematic um, categorization of, of, um, of aid to the sector. Um, uh, the um, the last initi initiative proposes a number of categories for classifying uh, commitments to the sector, and these include not only the, uh, the typical ones that the DAC also considers, like ASF, rural development, food and food aid, but it also considers agro-industries, basic nutrition, transport and storage, and social welfare as relevant categories. There's also a residual category that uh, individual agencies can use um, as, they, as they see fit. And Germany, for example, classifies 58% of, of its commitments under that residual category, whereas the Netherlands categorizes 51%. So quite a significant volume of, of funding classified under this residual category, which means that different owners use different uh, definitions on, on what is relevant to support the, um, the ACT initiative. Now, thirdly, the TRS is not seen, uh, the, the creditor reporting system of the DAC is not seen as useful uh, within the donor agencies for internal management and accountability, and this is leading to uh, quite a lot of diversity in methodologies being developed for internal use. Just, let me just give you a couple of examples. This is, for example, um, uh, budget support is an important aid modality for DFIT, and if it calculates uh, the percentage uh, different sectors, including agriculture and education and other, the, the percentage of different sectors are expected to benefit from budget support. So rather than doing like the CRS, putting budget support as a single separate category, it's, uh, it's allocates it across relevant sectors. Now the World Bank, for example, categorizes expenditures by both uh, a sectoral and a thematic classification, which are um, each of them adding to 100%. So agriculture will be part of a sectoral classification, rural development will be a rural, will be a thematic classification, and you might have um, agricultural projects which fall under the, uh, the rural development a theme, uh, but you could also have, um, have other probably more linked with the, with the urban economy, which fall outside the rural development theme. Uh, the World Bank also uses um, 
also allows up to five sectors or things to be allocated to a multi-sectoral loan. So this is also another difference to the CRS. In the CRS, each project is, is coded under a single code. So a multi-sectoral project would all, either be coded as such, as a multi-sectoral project, or be coded according to the largest component of the, the project. So this is just to tell you that there's a lot of diversity in the way that individual donor agencies um, measure agricultural aid and, and track it, and making it that very difficult to, to translate that into the CRS and, 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 and therefore with implications for uh, the consistency of, uh, of global aid statistics. So just quickly, some conclusions. Um, let me just run, run um, show all of them in the slide. Um, there are difficulties, as we've shown, in capturing policy changes in, in the way that donors are supporting agriculture, and also in isolating the agricultural aid component in, in initiatives such as uh, the AFCI. But without clarity on what uh, constitutes agricultural aid, improvements in accountability and transparency are very difficult to achieve. And without clarity on the purposes of agricultural aid, there are problems in, um, in establishing both attribution and a framework for results. Let me just say on that that the, 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 the notion of agricultural development and food security bundles together um, quite, different, um, quite different purposes. Agricultural production on the one hand, rural livelihoods and emergency relief. So bringing this, all of this together can make the framework quite, quite uh, confusing. And finally, these statistical, this statistical inconsistencies make it very difficult to align donor expenditure to domestic public um, expenditure processes and targets. So what can we do about this? The proposed uh, three recommendations for the platform to consider. The first one, the need uh, to clarify the scope of ARD and food security for improved uh, transparency and accountability. We need for we need we need greater cross-donor coherence in defining the, st the scope of, uh, of the sector so that um, cross-donor comparison can be more meaningful and uh, international, the international tracking of um, global commitments can be more accurate. And, uh, and in doing so, in trying to, to get this coherence, global aid systems should draw on the, on the strengths of uh, individual donor practices in, in aid management and accountability. And our case studies uh, highlight some of those good practices. The second recommendation, which in a way I've, uh, I've mentioned already, is the need to uh, um, unpack the objectives underlying ARD and food security to get more manageable results framework. We have at least three distinct policy domains, as I said, in the ARD and food security term. One focused on production and productivity, another one providing opportunities for improving living standards in rural areas, and another one uh, about addressing high, higher levels of risk and vulnerability. So these, these distinct objectives need to be understood but, and reconciled, but they need to be treated separately for a, a resource management purpose. And finally, in doing this, we need to uh, to break um, um, sectoral boundaries in, in aid measurement uh, to improve consistency between quality and, re and resource allocation. And as our, as our uh, recalculation of aid flows shows, um, we need to bring, bring into uh, the consideration, bring, bring into the definition of, uh, of agricultural development and food security all the relevant uh, activities that are going on that might not be uh, directly related to the objectives that we have in mind, but have an important contribution to, to, to them. Um, so supporting agriculture production and productivity is no longer just about irrigation and input, input um, uh, subsidies research, but it's also about uh, creating a, a more conducive uh, environment for, for agricultural producers. Now, uh, in doing that, I think the, um, uh, the use of, uh, that the World Bank makes of thematic codes could be quite useful to uh, in separating thematic from, from sectoral, could be quite a useful way of, um, of breaking the sectoral boundaries. Um, we need to design aid measurement mechanisms that uh, incorporate all the, all the relevant uh, interventions necessary to, to promote the various objectives underlying ARD and security, irrespective of the sectoral labels that uh, they might carry with them. 
And will that act include? I'll just leave you with the with the names of the people in the in the ODI team. Thank you very much for your time. Apologies, I over the fifteen minutes. Thank you very much, Lydia. Um, that was very interesting, very informative, and above all, very snappy. And I think we got everything in there in 20 minutes about PKP2. Um, I'd now like to sort of open the floor to discussion. If you'd like to say something, please press the raise hand icon or button, um, and we can start. Um, Mary Lowe, should we start with you? OK. Thanks a lot for the presentation. <clears throat> Actually, I had not really the chance to uh, to go through the, the document, so I read uh, quickly the summary before the, our discussion this afternoon. And uh, I'm quite actually uh, relieved to see that small subject agencies uh, have the same problem. <laughs> we see uh, at SDG in the same discussion about, we, we made a, a small event uh, last Monday for the World Food Day. And we make a small quiz for our people here. And one of the questions was, how much SDC is putting into agriculture? It was a big, big debate because we don't have really the figures. It depends what we put under agriculture, if we take rural development, what food security, and so on. And I see that it's really a, a common uh, discussion for everyone. And my question uh, to Lydia is a bit the discussion of water and climate change. How is that included or not uh, into the into the ARD and you, the different codes you mentioned, these AFF plus and so on that I'm not really familiar with? Um, is climate change and and water uh, included in that? And my second question, you you just mentioned it at the, at the very end. I, I'm I'm really interested to know a bit more about this uh, World Bank approach. Uh, how was it? Theme and sectors. If you can give a, a bit of example, I, I should read it in the document. But if you can just explain it a bit more in detail, thank you. Thanks, Mary Laura. Lydia, would you like to respond to that? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi. Thank you for those questions. Let me just try to um, um, answer them. As much as I can. Um, on what's included in the various definitions, um, there's elements of, uh, you mentioned water and climate change, there's elements of, uh, of water management that are part of the uh, batch definition, and therefore we've, um, we've, we've also accounted for that. Uh, all projects related to um, agricultural irrigation, irrigation would be part of that. Um, now, um, and that's already considered by the DAC as, as uh, under the, uh, the narrow definition AFF. Now, there's a series of um, environment, uh, environmental management and environmental protection related um, uh, projects, which um, are coded um, as a separate, um, under a separate category by the DAC. Um, actually called environmental protection as uh, the title. And uh, neither did that nor has uh, decided to, to include that. And that's because that would open a whole new chapter related to, uh, to uh, environmental sustainability and climate change, which, which we think are, of course, important uh, for agriculture. But then it would, it, would be, it would be very difficult then to decide where the um, where the um, the borders of our definition would uh, would lie, so we've decided to keep uh, to keep a, a calculation on on funds related to um, to um, environment uh, sustainability um, outside our definition as well. But um, the methodology that we devised, uh, I guess. The, the in our intention was not to come up with a definite number for the flows um, supporting agriculture, but the rather to show that it is possible to be creative by drawing on the uh, on the um, on the back um, um, data and to uh, uh, use the uh, the DAC purpose code uh, classification to identify all the relevant uh, areas that might, might be um, important depending on the policy objective that we are analyzing. Now, in our case, uh, we haven't focused specifically on climate change, 
uh, we could have, but we, we haven't. But if we had, then we could use more or less the same rationale, the same logic to pick on the relevant um, that purpose to, to construct a, a more policy relevant measure of uh, a way supporting the climate, um, climate adaptation, climate mitigation um, related objectives. Um, now, on the, on the World Bank, uh, are you interested in knowing specifically about the, um, the methodology used by the bank? Is there anything specific you want to ask on that, or just a general question on the uh, diversity of uh, donor practices? Maybe if, if you can just give an example, uh, the theme versus sectors, uh, I don't know how you, you, you mentioned it, no? The, the way of, of putting it in a in different category, how could you give an example, a concrete example on that, maybe? Okay. So, um, one of the uh, problems, uh, one of the criticisms made to the, um, to the back purpose coding is that uh, it mixes different types of, um, of categories. It mixes sectoral categories with thematic, like agriculture and industry and education. With thematic categories like um, like rural development, which is not a sector as such, but more a theme. Uh, it also mixes these with aid modalities. Budget support is, is a purpose goal alongside agriculture and rural development. So it's, uh, it, it, it creates quite a uh, the framework behind the back purpose code. It's not it's not as clear. Uh, and the, the individual donor agencies, including the bank, recognize that and, and have internally uh, developed their alternative ways of uh, measuring and tracking funding. So the World Bank has these different, two different ways of, uh, of coding uh, um, expenditure. One on the basis of sectors, and the sectors would be agricultural, education, health, uh, industry, trade. Um, um, there's a, a long list of sectors, which I think we have case study probably uh, provided an analysis. And alongside this uh, sexual classification, there is another separate thematic classification. So rural develop, develop, development would be uh, under that uh, thematic classification. Now, if uh, the World Bank portfolio for, for the year 2009 is 100, then uh, those 100 would be divided, um, uh, uh, divided according to the sector classification. The sector classification would add up to 100. And, and uh, parallelly, it would also be classified separately according to the thematic classification. So they both add to 100. Um, so for example, if um, uh, there is a project related to um, uh, let me think, which has um, an agricultural and a, um, a trade component, um, linking farmers to uh, international markets on, um, I don't know, uh, related to fair trade. Uh, the project would be under the sector classification, would be classified under the uh, agriculture and, and, uh, and uh, trade theme and uh, trade sector, whereas in the um, in the um, uh, thematic classification could be classified fully as, um, as rural development if the project um, is, is located in the rural sphere. Um, now, another important, um, another important element of the World Bank methodology is that uh, it, um, 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 it's for a, a, project, um, a project loan that has several components, as I was saying in the presentation, the World Bank can use up to uh, uh, six themes or six sectors to go that that uh, multi-component uh, project. So if a project has a trade, an agricultural, an education component, um, um, for example, related to training farmers on um, or professional training on, on on how to link up with uh, with markets, then the World Bank methodology allows that multi-component project to identify those different components and to um, distribute resources according to those components. Whereas the, C the CRS methodology would just take the largest component. If the largest ha the largest component happens to be trade, then that project would be coded as a uh, on the whole, as a trade project, and will therefore be outside uh, the that definitions of, uh, of agricultural aid. Does that um, illustrate um, 
um, the point I was trying to make. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, Lydia, um, and thanks for the for the question, Mary Lou. Um, any other comments or questions to Lydia or to the group in general? If not, then um, we'll just wait one more minute if anyone has something to say. All right. I think as we're coming closer to the end of time now anyway, um, I'd like to just take this opportunity to thank Lydia for her presentation. I'll just move over to Ellen Fun, who's just asked her. Ellen, please go ahead. So I actually have um, two questions. The first one is just whether it would be possible to get the presentation um, that you just made here virtually also as an electronic uh, version so that um, we could have a look at it again and maybe share it with colleagues who weren't able to um, follow the briefing just now. And then um, the second question um, is um, uh, regarding the DAC codes and, and OECDs. Um, uh, categories, etc. I was just wondering whether there are any efforts within OECD or around it to um, uh, to make any uh, any changes to that, or whether they are um, uh, fixed as as they are. I'm just not so familiar with uh, with the discussion, and was just wondering how it is in the agriculture sector, or maybe also in uh, in other sectors who may have uh, similar uh, problems to um, uh, categorize uh, aid flows. Thank you. Lydia, if you would be able to answer that sweet and short, that would be greatly appreciated. Okay. <laughs> On the presentation, I think I think the platform secretaries can uh, can distribute the the, uh, the the PowerPoint across all its members and people interested. So no problem with that. On, on the on um, um, initiatives after that has been um, undertaken, there's a series of uh, interesting um, initiatives that are going on. Um, um, more detailed information on individual projects are hopefully going to be available soon, and that would allow us to to make a more uh, detailed analysis of the um, the individual projects. There's also um, one thing that I haven't mentioned in the presentation is the um, the the the, the, um, the well, our our findings related to to the non bad donors, and there's not a lot of information on that, but they're quite some of them are quite important. Gates, for example, is now something like the fifth, the fifth largest uh, donor to uh, African agriculture. So, and this and this, this, these are quite um, changed the big picture quite significantly, including the way that the sector is being supported um, beyond the traditional way of, uh, of, of working. So the DAC is also moving in that direction, trying to bring in more information on uh, on the non-DAC donors and also on um, on private foundations such as um, as, um, as Gates. Um, and these are, I guess, initiatives that um, that will uh, improve um, the way that um, um, a data is, is computed and, and presented to the public. I think they are aware of some of the. Uh, we've we've had discussions with them, and they are aware of some of the um, the weaknesses in their methodology. But uh, to be fair, also the fact that the individual donor agencies have such a diverse of methodologies also makes it very difficult for them to come up with, um, with something consistent. So they are aware of some of the problems, but they are also aware of the difficulty of, uh, of managing such a diverse, uh, um, such a, a, a diversity of, of practices. All right. Thank you very much, Lydia, for that. Um, I'm now going to just hand over to Monica for a few last words. Um, thank you very much from my side and hope to see you at the next virtual briefing on Monday. Monica? Okay, and I hope those who've, who've listened in uh, will make uh, some PR for us and this new instrument. I think it's the best way to get uh, information really quickly and, and good, and it's less boring than listening in on, on the telephone because you can see the people, you can see the presentations. I, for one, uh, like it very much. And Lydia, uh, respect, you've whittled this down to 20 minutes a work which has lasted a year. I think that's that's amazing. And it's not only lasted a year, it's it's something really, really complicated. But it is also something and that that's where I find well uh, that's common sense also, know where the money is, uh, the importance lies. 
I, I think that this is one of the central points. If you, you see in one of your conclusions the accountability and transparency is difficult to achieve, why, what does that mean? I mean, that is a lesson which reaches far, far uh, over this uh, topic of aid flows. No? This means that people gathering for Busan still have a long way to go. So thanks again for that. I, for one, hope that was the ODI or ODI slash platform definition. Uh, we will go further and we will not just stop with the, the publication, but I hope that we will continue discussing and researching how to make this better and less diverse and more effective. Thanks to everyone. Have a nice rest of the afternoon and yeah, hope to see you soon again. Thank you. Thank you everyone for your interest.